still in the middle of a fundraiser. Um, those things never go well, and some of it's my fault because I'm not consistent in uh, pushing for it. Uh, some of it is simply that we are not geared to get behind programs um, that don't create a lot of sensationalism uh, and uh, garner popularity. Um, so that's never been my thing. My thing has always been substance. Also, uh, for those who aren't aware, I'm currently writing book number 25. And I haven't forgotten about y'all guys. We're going to get back to the Black Wealth series, uh, which is chronicling and paralleling the book that I'm writing currently right now. Uh, but anyway, for those of you who would like to sponsor a space in the book where you can pay tribute to uh, that special someone, wh whoever they may be, or even something that uh, commemorate or memorialize something that you've accomplished uh, you can still do that. The information to do that will be in the description box. The information to support the work we do will be in the information box. Okay. I didn't even mean to take that long, but I kind of wanted to uh, elaborate a little bit. Now, here we are. Uh, someone just sent this to me. It seems that I'm probably going to pronounce a whole bunch of stuff wrong because I'm really not into this stuff, so I don't pay attention to it. I don't watch it. It comes to my desk. I evaluate uh, what the context of any particular issue is and whether or not it has any teachable value. If it doesn't have teach, teachable value, value, uh, it never even makes it to the light of day on this channel. Uh, you know, it may be sensational. It may get a bunch of likes and it probably would help in the long term, if nothing else, in ad revenue generation for the site. But I don't want my name necessarily associated with empty gossip and empty BS. If there's something we can talk about on a hot topic, where we can have a an opportunity to grow to learn to evolve then i'm all for it but anyway uh too short uh, a rapper from my era so to speak when i was coming into my own as a young adult uh too short was out of oakland if i'm not mistaken and had a unique sound and was known for his uh vulgarity the same way that uh, Florida rapper uh, um, Uncle Luke was known uh, on the East Coast. And uh, it, it was what it was. You know, I would think that in time, everyone evolves um, in maturity, in responsibility, in the way we view the world. But it seems that he was uh, being interviewed on a show or by someone, Saweetie, uh, Saweetie, uh, however you pronounce it, you guys probably know uh, better than I do. But anyway, and he made the statement that he has never been in love with or had an attraction to, as he put it, uh, full black women. Uh, it's always been women who are mixed or biracial uh, that he's attracted to that he has fallen in love with and of course that drew the ire that that drew the ire of a lot of people and I wasn't going to jump on it because to me I think it's one of the most asinine stupidest things uh, to say, I think it's a very narrow-minded and misinformed uh, perspectives. Um, and I'm going to get to the whole uh, black women run the gamut as far as complexions and everybody has a right to be attracted with it. I'm going to get to that uh, real quickly because I'm not going to be long. But to not be aware of colorism in the black community and the devastation that it has caused that uh, black young black girls and even young black boys uh, suffer from self-hatred and a lack of love of self because of the differences that 
uh, arise out of complexion going all the way back to slavery and the house slave and the field slave and then we got to a point where we're talking about passing there's a new movie out uh, that I think everybody should watch and it's and, and it's about passing and 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 how the different perspectives go how you can sit up now and see athletes like Gilbert Arenas marrying a nun black for the purpose of ensuring that their offspring don't turn out their their skin color or their complexion and the crazy thing is Gilbert Arenas's kid still came out dark like him God you know there's a God when I, I think about stuff like that but uh, being a black man from the South and being uh, a person whose mother and father have ties to Louisiana, uh, when it comes to my mom, heavy ties. My great grandfather, who reared me, uh, descended from uh, slaves that were in Louisiana and came to Houston from Louisiana, born in 1909 himself. Um, but I personally witnessed and experienced colorism within the family. I mean, literally siblings not dealing with each other. And, it, it, and the primary issue was that girl too dark, that, that boy right there. And, and that developed a real tension between it. But it goes so much deeper than that when you start to give or ascribe uh, a, a, a higher value to something based off of it being lighter it goes back to the idea that they are superior you don't see it you don't understand it but you're also creating a complex with our darker uh, uh, children our darker women and even our men you know I think black darker skinned men are you know you know in a good place right now celebrity wise uh so there's some love there and i think that there's some things that are coming around but my thing is for him to say something like that it goes beyond what your prefer preference is you've got to be careful in how you define your preference number one is what is it about mixed or biracial women that that's the only thing that draws him see he hasn't even discovered in and of himself his own um, feelings of inadequacies. His, his own. Because see, let me tell you something. The moment that you think that something you're not is the best version of whatever you see. For instance, I tell black boys all the time. I tell young black males all the time. The moment that you look at a white woman, let's 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 take the the colorism and put it to the side for a minute. I want, to, I want to make a valid point and show you how it translates into colorism. I tell young boys when I'm working with them all the time, the moment that you look at a white woman and you automatically ascribe to her a higher sense of value than you do the black woman without knowing that you've already placed yourself in submission and in a position of inferiority to the white man because if you automatically believe inherently that the white woman is better than the white, I mean, the black woman, if the white woman is better than the white woman, then you automatically think the white man is better than you. You must learn to learn, you must learn to love self. Now, uh, to this idea that everybody has a right to choose. My thing is, everybody had, does have a right to be attracted to what they're attracted to, but you have to understand and be honest with yourself why you're attracted to it. Now, me, uh, my, my, my attraction to women has run the gamut. I've had from the eighth grade, well, seventh, seventh or eighth grade, the darkest girlfriend I could ever had, and she was dark, dark, and unbelievably gorgeous. And I've had some light-complected women, and I had a bunch of caramel and everything in between. Uh, complexion, in other words, isn't what I, I see. I, I, I have a thing for voice, tone, figures, and shapes. Uh, but the richness of the person in, 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 in and of itself, and it's always been that way, so it's not something I've evolved into. I've always been able to run the gamut. I, I look at a woman, and again, I guess being an athlete, I, I for the longest time was attracted to athletes, but I can see the beauty in any woman, any shape, any size. I can see the beauty in the black woman. I can see the richness of who she is. I can sense her, 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 uh, 
her history and heritage in her gait. I just really enjoy black women. And uh, people who know me know my past life. They know where I've been. So I've been out there in the world wilding at a particular point. Uh, you know, call myself successful and, you know, have, you know, just had access to access upon access. And the one thing I didn't do stupid was I didn't step outside the beautiful women. Now, I wish I uh, wouldn't have been as disconnected to their emotions and their feelings when I was a young man and really have known what I know now. Uh, I've never purposely harmed a woman, never, you know, been a violent person uh, towards women uh, or anything like that. But I sold my wild oats and not anything I'm proud of, but I'm being honest about it. Um, you know, um, so I, I'm not perfect, but what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is we have a lot of work to do in the sense of understanding the depth of what we're talking about. I, I saw a woman um, talking about you know, talking about it on one of the threads that I went when I went and did my research, you know, again, a person has a right to their attraction. You you tend you 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 are you have a tendency to be attracted to the things that have influenced you over time. Normally, uh, you you sort of attracted to things that have been played up. Um, and I knew growing up, uh, being from Louisiana and being in Houston, where a lot of families from Louisiana were from, and we had what we, we uh, what is known in 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 the South, in, at least here in Texas, as different types of what what we used to call Frenchmen's because they were from Louisiana, and you can tell that they were definitely some European mix somewhere down the family line a long way, but you could tell uh, complexion, hair texture, a bunch of things, and they were temp. Uh, there was a tendency to view them you know and differently and the thing is my grandmother and grandfather explained something to me early on and my grandfather it was something for him because he was a dark-skinned uh quote unquote uh geechee frenchman uh hair real wavy and straight but dark-skinned his sister on the other hand was light light complected and so he tended to favor my darker complected children and felt like my grandmother favored my light, lighter complected kids. Now, these kids came from the same woman. So before you start saying, oh, these kids came from the same woman, my first wife. Uh, but the thing is, I could feel his pain and how he took offense to my oldest son in his mindset, not getting the attention that my younger son got two different complexions. Um, and then it just made me start to pay attention. And then obviously as I became older and I started to look into it, I started to do research, I started to write about it. Then it became something even more um, alarming. And we tend to discount when darker skinned women take issue with it without understanding why, because darker skinned women our darker skinned sisters have caught absolute hell with how they've been treated, with how they've been handled. We're constantly hearing how beautiful she is. Oh my God, she's got good hair. Uh, you know, she doesn't have nappy hair. And the thing is, we don't understand that the texture of our hair and the peasiness of our hair is actually our, one of our attributes. It's one of the beautiful things, you know, about us it's one of the most distinct things about us. you go to other races and there's not a whole lot of difference between hair and texture but you come to us and it's distinct now the more you mix now you know and that's always exceptions with different uh tribes and different vi and, and 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 all that but at the end of the day this there's something about our 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 melanated existence that sets us apart but we since we spend so much time uh, 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 desiring or aspiring to be like the oppressor, aspiring uh, to uh, similar traits of Europeans while they're all desiring to be like us. It's amazing, but when someone comes out and says, I prefer light-skinned women, 
or when someone comes out and uh, says, I prefer uh, biracial women. What you're saying is, if I could get white women, I would. Uh, but if I can't have a white woman, I want the closest thing. And what you don't realize is you've lost your manhood in the process. And some might, might ask, is the dynamic somewhat different when it's a female preferring a light-complected male? And the dynamic is somewhat different because the desire to have the light complected version of something wasn't so much a female thing as it was a male thing initially i think when women want it uh it's more in the sense of preference now it could be in in, in it, again you got to ask yourself why why now if you come from a, a situation where mom was light complected then there is there's a legitimate reason why you may be attracted to light complected or you come from a family with light complected or something as simple as your first crush but you gotta ask why was she your first crush did she stand out because she was light complected you gotta ask all these questions you gotta be honest with yourself my thing is it's an issue for me because it's an issue for my people. It's an issue for my sisters. It's a very sore subject. Um, Marion is, you can't really tell it in that picture, but she's a darker, definitely darker than me. Um, unbelievably beautiful. We got some beautiful dark skinned babies. Um, and there are some light complexed people running around, kids. You know, it, it, it is what it is. We've got the, the whole rainbow. And we are very aware. And we spend a lot of time loving on our children, our nieces and our nephews, our grandkids, uh, to let them know they're all beautiful. And, and and what I'm saying is I'm not saying don't love like complected black women. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying be careful how you address issues. Be careful what's driving your attractions. Become so entrenched in who you are that those things are natural. Because I don't have a problem with light-complected black women. I don't have a problem with very, very, very dark-complected black women. Uh, and I'm not going to sit up and talk about either side in any preferential way. Because, again, I don't want complex i don't want uh complexes on either side what i want is to see our women loved uh and i'm not here to define whether a, a biracial person is black or not um by all intensive legal purposes they are uh by the one drop rule they are uh but i think that we need to learn how to love the purity of who we are it's just me i think we need to learn that and the thing is if you were born here and the descendants of slave, the chance of you being uh, untainted by white blood is probably not likely. I mean, it is just what it is. Um, there are certain parts of the motherland where you find some fair-skinned people, but the truth of the matter is, when you look like me, uh, there's a good chance there's some, some tainting going on somewhere down the line. It just is. Um, but I claim 100% uh, love for my people and my 100% blackness. I don't need to know if I'm 5% this, 3%. Don't give a shit. I don't want it. I don't claim it. I'm claiming 100% struggle be one black. And I love my black sisters, all complexions. But my dark skinned sister, sweetie, you're gorgeous. Don't let someone else's complex define who you are. Light-skinned sisters, let's be honest, you've, you've had it a lot easier than your dark-skinned sisters. doesn't mean that life's been easy because that's a lot of things our sisters go through beyond how they're classified based on c complexion. And my black brothers, a lot of things are going on. That's why I'm excited about the fact that I've become a part of an international group uh, 
supplying resources and safe spaces to black brothers to deal with the issues that are so easily and often uh, unannounced, un, 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 uncared for, and swept under the rug. We're gonna deal with mental health. We're gonna deal with a bunch of other things, relational issues and all of this, absentee fatherhood, and we are kicking it off you know, toward the end of this year, we're having a, a official launch. Uh, it's called the International uh, Chapter of My Brother's Keeper, set up by uh, Brother Olu Tokes, and we're going to talk about that more uh, coming up. So I'll be providing mental health services and a bunch of, a bunch of other things out of my office, uh, connecting with a bunch of other brothers. And so this is about all of us learning to love ourselves all of us understanding the depths of what we've been through and how our historical experiences in this country have shaped our paradigms and how we view one another, how we view ourselves. And we need to learn how to see the beauty, the gorgeousness, and the, the majesty in who we are and without needing to aspire to appear to be accepted, acknowledged, or to look like anyone else but who we are. Uh, we need to embrace that. We need to love that. And we need to be careful how we handle one another, especially when it comes to being uh, based on complexion, based on socioeconomic status, based on background. We need to learn how to love each other regardless. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Every last one of you have an unbelievable day. Yeah, yeah.